Let's hope the noise. Good day, beautiful people. Today we will be optimizing our world. Uh, I'm gonna give you five, five tips for optimizing your world. It sounds like a few, but they will like improve your FPS quality. At, no, quality. Your FPS. It will improve your FPS and um, like behavior, as in stuttering for your Oculus Quest, uh, for your PC or whatever. It will improve it greatly. So let's get started and dive right into it. We're gonna um, start with tip number one and that is actually <laughs> Okay, so let's go back right into our project and uh, start with the first few tips Here we are this is our beautiful home just like in every tutorial so far we just keep optimizing this model because we already made it and you can follow along the whole series just to get to this point so um, it, it's really a tutorial for the beginners and slowly we enhance can, we enhance it? can you enhance it can we enhance this can you enhance it hold on a second i'll enhance or skills and add new techniques to it make it better etc so today we'll be doing the five tips in optimizing and we're gonna start with number one and that will be reducing your textures like yep it sounds straightforward but it most of the time doesn't happen in projects as we will be using a lot of materials like you can see over here a lot of materials uh, we're just gonna select one of them and we get into the textures folder directory so well just select them all we're gonna select them all and you can see in the inspector that we have all kind of options one thing to uh, consider is like if you don't have any transparency just put it on none for your textures and we don't have transparency actually for any of the textures so let's put them all on none we don't need them second one is um the the max size so every texture to apply this one first every texture has its own size like um 1024 or 2048 or whatever size it can be literally every every any any every every any size it, it's a texture like this one it's 2048 you can see it like in the bottom um no you cannot see it because my face is on it let's move it a little bit over there like in the bottom right over there you can see 2048 2048 so that's the actual texture size and the max size that will be rendered out when you publish your world will be 2048 so it will all be compressed to 2048 put it on 1024 we don't need high quality rolls over here even if if it's like a really ugly texture anyway put it even lower but try to keep um your textures at max like 1024 don't, don't go over that and use crunch compression please <laughs> I know like many people don't use it but it increases or if you enable it it decreases your <coughs> total MBs of your world in like well if you got a world of like 100 MB this will scale down to like maybe 50 60 MB and for the Oculus users or like the slow downloading users this is really a saver put it on um like at 50 percent it you won't even notice it i can wait let me put myself aside again if you look at the texture and i apply it you won't see any difference you can like 
compress it even more to like a 100 but you might start seeing things happening if that happens just slide it down again maybe at zero you could see it change a little bit but like oh, 50 50 is more than enough so and uh, as we really like to organize our textures and materials etc this is fairly easily by just going to the textures folder go over there select them all ctrl a max size put them all on 10 24 and use crunch compression 50 percent is enough apply make it do its thing and wait for it so after this you already scaled down your world like by a half no no by a half maybe like like 70 percent um of the mbs is left so it compressed like maybe 30 mbs and that's number one that's the, the easy one like set the textures to 1024 crunch compress it and make sure that if an alpha isn't used to deselect it because it will create a new source for that texture that isn't needed anyway so that's one let's go to two dynamic lights or baking we already did it actually because we got our lights and we got it baked make sure that all your lights are unbaked except for the one if you want it's not really needed let me see where do you, uh, we have it over here like the sun <coughs> we got it on mix so it will end bake and it will cast hill time shadows but we don't want that on like every layer so we're gonna select none you can see that everything already turns down let's move this up again and just select the layers that you want to like globally light for your entire world so i mostly do the player player local it's not really needed but who cares the ui so when you open your ui it will be clear and visible for everyone it won't be interfered with like the lightning settings like a darker uh, menu or something like that and let's see the ui itself like the icon of being muted or, uh, or not and the mirror reflection because everything in the mirror like yourself your your own reflection you want that to be lit up so Put that on the render layer as well and for the rest we don't actually need anything else sometimes i like to um, make my pickups pickup items a little bit lighter so i put it in this like light setting as well so it will all be uh, always be lit and easier to detect for the user so they know it's a pickupable and that's it that's it after you've done that you go to your lightning tab like if you can't see it go to rendering and lightning settings it will open up this as a simple window first and you can just drag and drop the tab over here into that slot or wherever you want it and organize your own playground so in here we got well we already have the direct light uh, real time global you can put it on it doesn't really matter any how the lightning mode i always like the shadow mask so it creates the shadow mask why would i have say that and it always notes and notifies you about what it does but i most of the time i use shadow mask um the light map settings are fine i'm not going too much into detail at this point because it's well it's a lot to take in if you want to like optimize it make sure your light map setting is on 1024 
you can go higher if you have like a lot of objects or whatever but in general 1024 is enough it creates maybe a, a, a few more uh, light maps but overall it will reduce your MBs more than if you take a bigger size of a render light map all right that's it generate lightning and it will do its thing I'm actually in uh, 31 minutes I'm not gonna wait for it right now but overall make sure your lights are on baked have at least like for maximum uh, amount of real-time lightnings maybe three four don't overdo it because it will reduce the performance in your world try to have none or maybe one but don't overdo it because you will notice it try to bake so three static objects static objects we did it a lot of, uh, actually because it's well I, I use it for every project so I'm kind of used to it but for you the one that wants to learn how to optimize your world else you wouldn't watch this video check any of your objects check them make them static there is like a small checkbox over there right in the corner right above me check it do it for everything like if it's not moving if you won't pick it up or it's not animating make it static that will help a lot and while you're at it also check the light map uh, well uh, you don't have to because if you make it static at this checkbox it will be ready for your light map else you can go like in here and you can make it light map static but because we also want to bake every lightning make sure it's static for the light map else it won't notice it also if you make it static it will be visible for your reflection probe so if i like unstatic and not only and i would bake this one again you can see it's not visible for the reflection anymore and if i put them back on <coughs> and i'm gonna bake it bake it you will see it's there again so make sure to make it static also for your reflection probes extra extra tip try to have at least or at max one reflection probe because if you have multiple pickups and multiple reflection probes it won't batch those pickups it, it will be a heavier at the end because they all want to switch from reflection probes and it cannot batch objects that don't have the same values in it like the same reflection probe etc quick tip so that was three make it static that's really simple you don't have to do anything else staticness is the way you can also like just uh, if you have a lot of objects just select them that's why we like to organize things check them make them static i already have everything static but check them over there that's all for occlusion culling i know that like maybe 80 percent of the worlds don't use this and it's so easy and has such a performance impact that you should actually do it what is occlusion culling well occlusion culling is mostly that if you don't see it don't render it 
easy as that. If I don't look at this wall, I don't need that wall in my memory. It, it doesn't need to be there. So remove it from the view and reduce the batches, the calls. Like the batches and the set pass calls. Let me just keep this one open so you can see it a little bit. So if we're gonna add occlusion, you, you cannot see it anywhere. We're going to window and over there we have rendering and we have occlusion culling. Press it, it will open in a window just like before. I drag mine over there because it's easier for me. And bake it. Just bake it because we already put everything on static, etc. It's fine. Like you can also go to every object and put them in the occluder, uh, occluder static or occlude D static. Too much, too much work. Just put static on if it's a static object. So back to the occlusion. It has been baked. It's like 200 KBs. It's really nothing. And you can visualize it. So select a camera from the scene. So let's do that. Main camera. Main camera. You can now see what the camera sees. Do you see that? Like half of the house is gone because it's not in the view the, the sofas the couches gone because it's not in the view if we move our camera you can see it slowly moving fading out everything it only renders what we see and do you see the batches over here and the set pole cars let me turn off the visualization again object big 124 batches, 45 calls. Back to main camera. Move it slightly. Let it calculate. And what was over here? Something. You can see it just reduces everything. It just does. Clear. I think it just keeps it in memory now. It really works. Do it, please. One thing uh, on the side note: if you want to use this six, uh, six successfully, I have a little hard time pronouncing that. Um, it works if everything is sliced up. Like most of the prefabs that I also create for you guys, um, it's like this. Slice it up. If you got like one big wall over here and just a few more pieces over there, and a few pieces over there, that's like one object. It won't work because if you still look at that single point and it knows this whole object is attached to that single point over there it will keep rendering everything <coughs> so don't make your objects too large like when trying to like this almost costs nothing just a plane uh, we could even reduce or optimize a block like this better by just removing the outsides or the, the small edges like this it's fine it's not that big of a deal and not much impact on the performance so make sure you do that occlusion curling open it up click it bake it press your main camera and check to see if it really Reduces your batches, set calls, etc. Et you can see it will. Also, you will notice in in game. So, last one, number five. I think like mirrors or whatever. Maybe a secret room you got somewhere. 
hide it at start like things that you don't see or can toggle or whatever hide it at start and it sounds normal or weird or whatever but do it and the way we do it like uh, let's let's see we got a secret room at start and that secret no no it's not secret room we got that high quality mirror got something over here and because we use uh we're baking our lights it's, it's perhaps not a good example but let's pretend that this is your couch couch and um, we want to bake the shadow into the world but we don't want this to be visible at start when we join the world uh, for example we got a secret room you don't want all the objects in your secret room to be visible let's make our secret room so we're gonna duplicate the sofas a little bit up here rotate them a little bit because we uh, like it over there and we want <coughs> to generate a lightning shadow map at the bottom so we generate our lightning Ooh, I'm, nope, nope. I'm not gonna do it right now because it's taking too much time so we want our shadows to be available but we don't want the sofas to be over there the couches sofas couches same so the, what what we can do is um i like to put them on my oh, vrc world <coughs> check the inspector and in here i normally do all the uh, logic for when i enter the world or leave a world or whatever so we got our trigger over here already and when my network is ready put it on network ready that's when you joined and everything is lo uh, not everything is loaded in but most of it is loaded in except for like the players etc so when we are loaded in the world and we can walk around we are gonna set game component active and we will drag those two sofas over there uh, uh, Let's unlock this one, select the two, drag them over there, and they're over there. So uh, we want to make them invisible. That's all. And we can later on like, or put a secret code somewhere, or pick up something and put it on another object to make them appear again. But at least we will be having the shadow maps ready for it. And you can bake it so like hide that uh, hide all your mirrors you can even create a a uh, a trigger and when you walk through the trigger the mirror toggles off again or endless possibilities just try to hide things like mirrors or if you have multiple mirrors when I toggle this one, I don't want to see the other one again. So make sure you toggle off one mirror and enable the other mirror. And it can be just done just like this. Create another mirror, drag it over here, and disable the first mirror when you press this button, for example. We already did likewise thing in here with the high quality and the low quality with the high quality low quality mirror do that for all your mirrors like don't show the, uh, don't put them online or enable them all at the same time just do not allow that unless your world is 
of course made for that purpose like you have a ceiling mirror and a top mirror or something and we all know what happens with ceiling mirror. stop doing it so that's all <coughs> five tips textures set them on 10 24 or lower make sure you crunch compress it dynamic lights don't use them make them baked static objects put every object uh, that is actually static put them on the static layer layer just tick them on occlusion culling make sure you bake that into your scene and use it uh, one more thing if you want to use the uh, the, the occlusion culling well then you have to let me see where was our VSC world make sure that the reference camera also is your main camera do always do this it's so much easier and five hide things like hide objects that you don't see or don't need anymore when a player moves away from it make sure it's local that's all guys thanks to my beautiful patrons again uh, don't forget to like subscribe and follow me on i don't know twitter patreon just follow me